everybody. Today I'm going to um, do a demonstration on how to trim a bowl or really any pot. So first of all, I've already thrown this bowl and when I threw it on the wheel, I used a wooden tool to clean up around the edge. So I don't have a lot of mess around the edge, but I do have a fair amount of clay here that I'm working with, maybe about that much clay. So I can slough off at least half of it and add a foot. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, the pot is in leather hard stage, so it's cool to the touch. I can't really change the form in any way, but I could certainly carve into the bottom of the pot. So you can see that, right? Leather hard. All right. So the first step is to center it on the wheel. What I do is I set it down. And before I attach it to the wheel, it's got to get centered. So I'm going to slowly spin the wheel. And I'm going to hold a tool here to make a mark on my pot. And as I look at the top of that mark, I see, you know, one area is smaller and the other side is bigger. So I'm going to scoot the pot towards the smaller area. Now I'm going to do this again. Just create a nice line so I can really take a look here and see how that looks. I'm going to kind of show you how that looks. So I've got a nice guideline here that I can keep going by. And at this point, it looks like all the space around this final line I've made is the same amount, which means it's centered. Of course, once it's centered, you don't take it off like I just did, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like. So once you've got the pot centered, let me just recenter it here, make sure I'm back in business. Scoot it over a little bit like that. You're gonna grab some fresh clay, all right? I'm gonna spritz it with just a tiny bit of water and you're gonna split it up into three sections, like three big grape sizes, all right? I'm gonna kind of roll them into some fat coils and I'm gonna Put pressure on the top of the pot so it does not move because I just centered it. And then I'm going to attach half of the coil to the pot and half of the coil to the wheel head. I'm going to do this in three different places, kind of creating this tripod so that it's all locked in. All right, with half of that clay attached yeah. to my pot and half attached to the wheel head, it's pretty sturdy now and it's not going to go anywhere. All right, next up, you can grab whatever trimming tools you want. These are the ones I have today. We have different sizes and shapes. Um, and I'm going to start with one of my larger pots. Now, knowing I have a lot more clay to slough off in this area, I'm going to start there. If you've ever used a lathe, um, like where you have wood spinning and you're removing it with a tool, the trimming process is similar to that. Um, and you know it's in good leather hard form or it's in leather hard stage when the clay is going to come off in ribbons. So you'll see the clay coming off in ribbons. But I'm going to start to remove some clay in here and decide where I want to put my foot. So here we go. Spin it at a medium speed. Lock my elbows in so I'm nice and anchored. And I usually put at least one finger on the center or two fingers on the center just to give it a little downward pressure to encourage it to not pull off the wheel. Then with my other finger, I'm never just holding a tool with one hand. I'm always locked in and then I've got two hands on my tool. So that's what I'm going to do here. And as you can see, it's coming off in these absolutely beautiful ribbons. I'm going to slow this down just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. But you can see these absolutely gorgeous ribbons that's coming off. So I'm going to try to grab one, but I won't. So now I'm going to dig into here where I know I have some excess clay. And if you start to get pulled away, just remove your tool and then reposition yourself and start again. So I'm going to come right in here to create my foot. I'm going to use a tool with a little bit more of a sharp corner on it. I'm going to start removing all this clay here that I know I can remove. There's a nice little ribbon you can see. They're so lovely. So 
So I know I have clay that I can remove here because I assessed my pot before I put it on the wheel, before I centered it. I really looked at where on my pot I could remove clay. So I have that in my mind. So I hopefully don't cut out an area that doesn't have much clay in it and put a hole in my pot. That's the thing about trimming is it makes the bottom of the piece look so much more professional and beautiful, but it is one more way that you can have an error and sort of ruin your piece, which again is why it's always so special when you get a piece all the way through the process, all the way to stage six. So I'm just coming along the edge here, trying to make a really, um, what's the word? Like if I were to hold my pot up and really look at this, um, this curve and this angle, I want it to be all, um, I want it to be smooth and not jagged. I keep holding my tool here, keep perfecting that little curve until I feel happy with the angle I've created here. And now I'm gonna use this to create a foot. So I'm gonna come in. really accentuate where this foot is going to be, okay? And then on the inside, I'm going to decide how thick I want my foot to be. And I'm going to lay a guideline down. I'm always kind of switching tools for whatever I need in the moment. But this is going to give me a nice guideline, which means I'm going to remove everything inside of here because you want your pot to sit up on this foot. And this, the foot is going to be the only thing touching the table not this anymore. I also don't want to go too deep with this though, because then I'll put a hole in my pot. Actually did that on my last trimming job. I went too far. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just going to remove in the middle, but still being really mindful to not go too, too far. You see it coming off in these Gorgeous ribbons. All right, so now I've taken it down a level on the inside. So my foot is higher than my base, which is what we want. And now I'm just going to shape my foot. So instead of the foot being flat across, I like it to sort of be rounded. When it's sitting opposed to flat, you can design it however you want, but I like a nice rounded foot. So that's what I'm gonna aim for. Let's see, I'm just rounding the base of that foot so it's no longer 90 degree angle, but it's got a little curve to it. Working on the inside of the foot and the outside of the foot. To really create that curve that I'm looking for. Sometimes I like to do a little undercut there. Getting it all round. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. At this point, if there's anything else I want to touch up here, I can go ahead and do that. Anything else on the interior? Maybe I need to take it down another level. Again, being really careful I don't cut through it. I'm going to remove one more layer there. And there we go. Now the bottom of my pot is trimmed. I've removed a lot of excess weight and the bottom looks a lot more professional. I've got a little stamp here with my um, signature. So I'm just gonna stamp that on there. And then you can um, remove what you use to adhere. You didn't slip and score it, so it shouldn't stick your pot too crazy. And here's what it looks like when it's all said and done. It's kind of nice on the bottom. And additionally, I can now put glaze in this area because the pot's going to sit up on this foot to fire. 
So this is no longer going to touch the kiln shelf. So if you want to add glaze to that area, as well as the rest of the pot, that would be fine. Just no glaze on the foot. And that's how you trim a pot.